Hello, everyone, and welcome to WooStream and this evening's panel discussion hosted by the Willamette University Sustainability Network and featuring Growing Oaks, an environmentally focused student organization at Willamette. My name is Eric Lassan, and I'm from Alumni and Parent Engagement. And thanks to you for joining us. All right, this evening's session will figure will feature Growing Oaks, a conservation project, and Willamette at Willamette focused on stewarding our Oregon oaks. Now I'll introduce this evening's host and an alum, Marissa Fink. Marissa graduated from Willamette's College of Arts and Sciences in 2020 with a double major in music and environmental science. After graduation, Marissa did seasonal work as a naturalist for the Appalachian Mountain Club in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, as well as working for the Division of Parks and Forestry in her home state of New Jersey, Marissa is now the Southern Maine Sustainability Fellow in the Resilient Resilience Corp, AmeriCorps program based in Portland, Maine, where she works on climate action, planning and community outreach and engagement. All right, Marissa, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Eric, for that introduction. And welcome everyone. I'm so glad to be here hosting. And we're going to start tonight with our land acknowledgement. We are gathered on the land of the Kalapuya, who today are represented by the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde and the Confederated Tribes of the Siletz Indians, whose relationship with this land continues to this day. We offer gratitude for the land itself, for those who have stewarded it for generations, and for the opportunity to study, learn, work, and be in community on this land. We acknowledge that our university's history is fundamentally tied to the first violent colonial developments in the Willamette Valley. Finally, we respectfully acknowledge and honor past, present, and future Indigenous students of Willamette. As we consider the content of this presentation, please consider your own positionality and how to take today's lessons to honor those negatively impacted by histories similar to our university. As mentioned earlier, this event is hosted by the Willamette University Sustainability Network. Our network is an affinity group of Willamette graduates, staff, faculty, and current students interested in sustainability-related issues or who work in sustainability-related fields. Many of the alumni engage primarily to build connection, share resources, and advocate for change. Anyone interested in participating at any level can join our network. You can find us under the community page on the new Woo Connect platform. Earlier this month, we had our leadership meeting and everyone mentioned their excitement for tonight's event and gratitude for our panelists and their work on this presentation. It's now time to get into the content of tonight's presentation, Growing Oaks. There will be time for questions at the end, so feel free to note any questions that arise as we go along. Now I'll hand things off to Isabella to tell us about Growing Oaks. Hi, um, thank you, Marissa, for the introduction. And uh, we're so grateful that everyone has been able to make it to our presentation. Um, so I'm Isabella Stone. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a third year student at Willamette University, uh, majoring in environmental science. And I'm a part of the collaborative team of Growing Oaks as a project lead. Um, so our team is made up of almost all student leaders and provides a space in which students can develop their own leadership skills and also bring their ideas and skills to the project and have kind of um, their own take on what they want to do with their project. Um, I'm Adelaide Kemp. I'm a second year environmental science major. I use she, her pronouns, um, and I'm a project lead assistant with that. I'm David Craig. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm the uh, lucky person to be the advisor for this group and was a uh, collaborator with the founders, Angie Wang and Grace Schiffrin, who are graduating uh, in a few weeks. And uh, this, this uh, slide you can see here is a picture of our current team and uh, some of our activities and the, and the people. And one of the things I'd like to share about Growing Oaks that's, uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about our origins, but it's really, it's, its roots are in social justice and anti-racism, and then thinking about how to do that in the way of making a land acknowledgement uh, living action. And so um, Marissa, thanks for that uh, acknowledgement that you did in the way you did that. One of the things that the uh, um, origins of our group came in a really low point for uh, the, all of our personal lives and the history of the institution. Uh, there was an extraordinary fire in the fall of 2020 uh, that uh, 
uh, turn the skies red. We had the COVID pandemic uh, disrupting the uh, loving, wonderful in-person residential college life that is sort of the, the essence of alignment's traditions. There was extraordinary social unrest around the presidential election in 2020 and across the Capitol uh, that uh, attracted all kinds of um, protests and some violence uh, from white supremacists. And then we had, uh, on top of everything else, we had this uh, hopefully only once in a lifetime ice storm, which did uh, extraordinary damage to many of the oaks we're gonna talk about today. I was teaching a class called Biodiversity and Climate Change uh, that anticipates uh, changes in the world through uh, the events of, and we, uh, of weather and other types of, of things. And so in the conversation of that class, uh, Grace and Angie um, proposed that we do a Community Action Fund Sustainability Grant, a CAFES grant, and that we try to use some of the ideas that we were learning in that class and that we brought from wisdom in our uh experiences in our life to do something. And so the simple idea was, let's focus on oak trees. This is the central tree to the Willamette Valley uh, and its history of people since time immemorial. It's one of the uh, key tree trees of the habitat. We have uh, trees on our campus that precede the history of the university. Uh, we know that thanks to Professor Karen Erebus who's with us today. Uh, if you've been to the Sparks parking lot, those trees uh, are uh, witnesses to the entire experience of uh, Willamette. And they are also part of the experience of the families um, of Kalapuya people who are today recognized as the Confederate tribes of the Grand Ron and the Siletz. This uh, work is informed by our growing friendship with the, the Grand Ron and Siletz people. So I wanna thank uh, their con contributions, um, particularly David Jean Lewis, uh, Cheryl Kennedy, uh, David Harrelson, um, Greg Archuleta and uh, uh, and uh, Rose Hyber, who's uh, not a California person, but another indigenous person who's helped us with some of the uh, work that we've been doing. And then uh, Jeremy Alua, who's been uh, works at the Grand Ron Native Plant Nursery. Uh, those are all folks who contributed to the wisdom we have today. So Growing Oaks has a large range of, of goals that we've been focusing on, not just specifically within environmental science, but um, a larger, a more inter interdisciplinary range to um, value the interests of all of the students on campus. Um, and so our goals are focusing on the ecological, historical, and cultural significance of the Oregon Oak. Um, so we've been focusing on restoring the Oregon Oak to their ecosystems. And mainly we've been doing this through acorn collection and um, growing ac uh, oak saplings. We've also been taking part in political actions concerning the Oregon Oaks. Um, this has been through a lot of public comments speaking out for the protection of the Oaks. Um, and then we've also been trying to spread more awareness of the project um, through news media and volunteering opportunities that we've had um, for people to learn more about the species. And then we've also, as Dave mentioned, have been working on building um, a relationship with the indigenous peoples of the area because of their cultural significance um, with the Oregon oak species. And um, so that would be the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Bron and the Confederated Tribes of the Siletz Indians. Um, to grow our oaks, we first collect acorns, um, abiding by the honorable harvest. And we only collect oaks from the Salem area and the Leonard Valley, um, so local acorns. Um, and then they're stored in our fridge with vermiculite so that they don't rot and stay ready to be potted. Um, and then, so we're still potting plants that are acorns that we've collected in the fall of 2021. Um, and then we plant them as pots, in pots, um, as seen in this picture. Um, where they'll stay for at least a year before they're ready to be planted into the ground. Um, and then in our acorn collections, we always abide by the honorable harvest. Um, and the steps of the honorable harvest are first, know the ways of the ones who take care of you so that you may take care of them. Um, plants can be seen as food and medicine. Um, and from that perspective, they're the ones who take care of us. And through thoughtful observation and, and interaction, um, we can learn how they function, how they use, um, in order to best um, be sure that they remain ecologically stable. 
Um, and then always introduce yourself and ask permission before taking and abide by the answer. Um, be courteous and respectful of plants in the environment as you would your friend. Um, and imagine walking into your friend's house and eating all the food in the fridge. Like, that's not you want to do that. Um, never take the first, never take the last. Um, take only what you need. Um, sometimes the first one you see might be the only one, so you never take the first. And if you take the last one you see, you might have cleared an entire area of a particular species. Um, so avoid over-harvesting at all costs. Um, and taking only that which is given. Um, sometimes it's a little difficult to know when something is being given, but as we start to recognize growth cycles and patterns, it becomes clear when a plant or acorn is ready for taking. Um, and then never take more than half, um, which goes along with the never take the first, never take the last. Um, harvest in a way that minimizes harm. Um, and then always use what you've taken respectfully and never waste what you've taken um, and give thanks for what you have been given. Um, in all of our acorn collections, we abide by the honorable harvest. And we also document the trees where the acorns are sourced from um, on our, our naturalist page so that we can properly record the data. Um, most of our acorn collections so far took place in the fall of 2021 as it was a mass year when many Oregon white oaks released a large amount of acorns at the same time. Um, some collection occurred in the fall of 2021 last fall, but much fewer acorns could be collected as there were less that were released. And so uh, Growing Oaks has been involved in a lot of community outreach as a way for us to interact with um, the community members of both Willamette University and also the larger Salem area. And so we've been able to do this in a, a few different ways. Um, and so we've, we've created a website that uh, documents our project, what we've been doing, the history, and provides a way for people to reach out to us. Um, we also hosted um, our first ever Oak Festival this past fall. Um, we got a lot of um, participation from both Lamont University um, students and Salem community members. And we've also been reaching out um, to the larger public through news media. Um, and then we were also able to present at the Cascadia Prairie Oak Partnership Conference this past fall as well. Oh, you're on mute, Adelaide. Yep, sorry. <laughs> Um, so Growing Oaks has designed and created a website for our project um, as a way to share more information, how we started and what we've been currently working on. Um, it's a way in which people can reach out to the group for any reason, whether they would like to have some of the oaks that we've been growing or interested in donating to the group as well. Um, and so we've been featured in a few different news articles throughout um, the couple of years that Growing Oaks has been um, um, doing our thing. Um, in the beginning of the project, we were able to have our first introduction to the public through an interview with the Salem Reporter. Um, this article was able to put word out about our project and also provide a call to action um, of our want to collect acorns. And so with um, the availability of this news article, we were able to receive a lot of emails from Salem community members who wanted to be a part of the project and help us collect acorns, um, whether that was from their property or they were bringing us acorns that they had collected themselves. Um, and then more recently, we interviewed again with the Salem Reporter and then also with the Statesman Journal. Uh, the article for the Salem Reporter was used to promote our first Oak Festival um, this past fall as a way to get more participation from not only Willamette, but also the Salem um, public. And we were also able to see um, a larger group of participation from the Salem community after the release of this article. And then we also interviewed with the Statesman Journal, and this article was focused more on just what Growing Oaks has been able to do in the past year and what the project is about, our goals, and what we want to do in the future as a way to just raise more awareness for our project. So as I mentioned, we hosted a three-day Oregon Oak Festival to celebrate the significance of the Oregon Oak, and our first day was on October 7th. Um, and we kicked off the festival with an oak panel with um, several panelists, um, Professor David Craig, 
Professor Joe Bowersox, um, Willamette University student Grace Schifrin, Lindsay McClary from the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ruan, and Chris Sarah from the nonprofit Live. So professors Craig and Bowersox described the history of the Oregon Oak at Willamette, and Grace Schifrin was able to provide her student perspective and um, also the research that she's been doing with oaks. Um, Lindsay McClary is a restoration ecologist for the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ron, and she was able to speak about the past, present, and future of the oak in relation to the Oregon tribes. And Chris Sarah is the executive director of the nonprofit live, and he was able to add a perspective from the wine industry um, on their relationship with the Oregon Oaks. Um, and this event was held on campus, and we had mainly a turnout of a student audience. Um, but there were a couple of people from the larger Salem community that were able to participate. Um, our second event was uh, Xenofest, which was on Saturday, October 8th, um, where we had food demos, crafts, an oak wishing tree, a nature walk, and an oak sapling planting. Um, the food demos included tastings of like Oregon pancake or acorn pancakes and acorn jelly. Um, which emphasize many cultures of the world that have eaten acorns um, because they're such a widespread species and are so important in so many cultures around the world. Um, we had acorn crafts where people made acorn necklaces and cyanar prints from oak leaves. Um, we also planted our very first sapling um, with the ceremony to honor how the oak came to be and to those who have and will care for the oak in the future. Um, it was a really successful event. It took place on parents weekend um, so we had a really great turnout. Lots of students and parents attended um, and shared in oak enthusiasm. I just like to add the oak jelly was a discovery. Uh, it's a Korean uh, tradition, and uh, none of us in the group have uh, Korean heritage or Korean language skills, and we needed to actually um, find somebody to help us translate some uh, uh, packaging and do a special order. And so it was one of these really neat intersectional moments where we're trying to be multicultural, pluralistic in our approach to caring for oaks in our community. And, uh, and oak jelly, uh, it's hard to find, but it's sort of like tofu jelly uh, with the oak flavor. And then day three uh, was October 9th, and this consisted of two field trips. Um, and we were able to work with both the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ron and the Confederated Tribes of the Siletz Indians. Um, and we made these field trips available to Willamette University as well as the Salem community members. Um, our first trip was out to the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ron's um, Native Plant Nursery, which is managed by Jeremy Ojua, um, who is the manager of the nursery. And so he was able to give us a tour of the nursery, um, explaining what he does and how he grows the native plants in the nursery, and then also how... Um, he's able to create a store of these first foods um, that the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ron are able to continue using and growing um, foods that have been very, really significant to their culture. Um, and then we were also able to try some of the native plants. Um, the one I remember was the native carrot species, uh, which actually really tastes like carrots. So that was exciting. And then we also were able to gather some seeds for Jeremy so that he could use them to plant a new crop for the next year. And I'll uh, do a shout out to uh, the person here in the middle of this picture, Brian Twentner, is a visiting professor who's been doing some indigenous uh, curriculum for our campus. And uh, they encourage their students through extra credit to join us. So that was really nice. Can we go back to the slide real quick, Dave? Of course, yeah. Yeah, I was going to talk. Um, the second field trip that we went on was um, to the Confederate Tribes of Sluts Indians Turner property, um, which they recently acquired, um, where Josh C. Katz gave us a tour. Um, and we learned about the plan for the property, um, the restoration work that he's been working on, um, the oak legacy of the property, um, how they are working to restore it to the oak savanna that it once was. Um, and Professor Craig gave us um, lots of information about all the birds that we were hearing um, on our tour, which was really great. And then also this past fall, uh, some of our project leaders were able to participate in the Cascadia Prairie Oak Partnership Conference, or CPOP. 
Um, and so we, myself, Angie Wong, Grace Schifrin, and Sophia Rosenberg were able to present two posters at the conference. And so our first poster was titled, A Story of Propagating Hope One Acorn at a Time. And this detailed the story of Growing Oaks, how it started and what we've been able to do so far. And then our second um, poster was titled Legacy of Oaks, Collecting Impressions Across Generations and Locations. And this was more of a research-based pro um, poster that um, compiled responses regarding the public's general knowledge and awareness of the Oregon Oaks. And so to collect data for this poster, we sent out surveys hoping to reach people in Oregon, Washington, British Columbia, and Northern California, because this is the range in which the Oregon oak um, has been able to grow. And so we did this because we wanted to understand uh, what people knew about the Oregon oak. Um, and this was a really valuable experience. It allowed us to learn about current native plant projects, because um, we were able to attend a lot of the talks that were going on during the day. Um, and also provided us a space to share the project beyond Willamette, which was really exciting. Um, it was also really exciting talking to people that would come up and ask questions during our poster presentations who told us that they knew about the project and they were from like Washington or British Columbia. So it was really exciting for us to see how far our project was um, has been able to reach people outside of Oregon. The CPOP uh, group is a every other year meeting again of people throughout the range of the uh, Oregon Oak and Oregon Oak Savannah uh, complex. And so it was a really special meeting. Um, next, you wanted to talk about uh, the progress that we've made over to our goals over the past year. Um, we're currently growing over a thousand saplings in the community garden on campus um, and are working on giving them out to community members, wineries and members of the public. Um, we've also been approved for two experimental plots at Xena Forest and this summer or this semester we've started working on one of the plots. Um, next, as a student group, we've sent a public comment to the Meyer Farm property as a political action along with public comments to the city of Salem and we've been working on the Salem Heritage Tree Program. Um, we hope to continue to do more political actions similar to this um, in the future. And we have more recently been continuing to foster our relationship with the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde through volunteer work at their plant nursery and are working to continue our relationship with the Confederated Tribes of the Siletz through further communication and event planning. So far, um, as Adelaide mentioned, we've got over a thousand oaks potted and they've been growing for about a year. So they are now ready to be donated to people who would like to grow um, some of the oaks on their properties. Um, and so we've been working this semester on planting these oaks into the ground. We've been able to plant a few at our one of our experimental plots at Xena. And then last year we had sent out um, surveys asking, um, wanting to know if, if any residents in the area would like to have some of our donated oaks. And we got a lot of responses from that. And so this semester we've been working on getting these oaks out to the people who requested them. Um, and so also we've been able to move the location of where we've been keeping our oak saplings. And so they've now been moved to the community garden between the Sparks Complex and the Hatfield Library. Um, and we're really excited about this because it makes the oak saplings more visible and, and there, it's an easier accessible spot for students on campus to be able to see what we're doing with the project and also just spend time in the garden and help out in the community garden, um, just getting their hands dirty and doing work outside. Um, and then our current plan is to have about a thousand oak saplings at the garden at all times. So when we've been able to donate saplings, we plant um, pot new acorns as we donate um, in order to have a stable supply so that if we have future people requesting saplings, we have um, a supply that we can give them saplings from. Uh, I'll just thank the cafes, uh, the Community Action Fund, uh, Equity and Sustainability. A grant program again they're the ones that's a student run grant program and they're the ones who uh funded the materials that you can see in the picture all the uh containers and the soil and the pvc the chicken wire you can see this section we didn't cover the squirrels get in there they love acorns even when they're germinated and then also thank uh darren craigberry uh for making the oak planks from some of the trees 
that were lost in the ice storm. Those are oaks. And we're sort of constructing a kind of a deeper oak interpretive moment there in the community garden. This past summer, um, some of our Growing Oaks leaders have met with Chris Serra, who is an, the executive director at Live, and we've been working on creating a partnership with the nonprofit. So Live is a nonprofit that supports environmentally and socially responsible wine growing. Um, and so the partnership with us would focus on restoring Oregon Oaks to wineries, um, to the wineries that are acting as hubs. And so we have six wineries acting as acorn collection hubs. Um, Puerto de Terre Vineyard, Bethel Heights, Argyle Winery, Left Coast Estate, Union Wine Company, and Van Duzer Vineyards. Um, and so wineries are actually one of the largest threats to Oregon Oaks, just because when they have to put in their crop of grapes, they end up um, taking down a lot of the older growth oaks. And so this partnership would act as a way to kind of um, offset the carbon footprint that they've been contributing to by cutting down a lot of these oaks um, and providing a new um, habitat for the oaks. And so the way this would work is that these wineries acting as hubs um, would collect acorns or have people who've collected acorns drop off their acorns at these hubs. And then growing oaks would be able to pick up the acorns and then start growing them with the help of the wineries. And so then when they are able to once they've been able to grow for about a year and they're ready to be put into the ground, we can start planting them on these six wineries. I'll add the uh, extraordinary website that the founders made was how Live discovered us because they had done this calculation that 10,000 oaks would uh, meet the constituents of Live's carbon footprint in the next 20 years. And then the protocol that is being used for this network of folks was developed by the Growing Oaks uh, group. And you can find that at the, at the live site. Um, this spring semester, we were able to start planting some of our saplings on one of our experimental plots that we have at Xena Forest. Um, we were able to plant five saplings on the plot with the help of the Jewish Student Union um, in an event that we did in partnership with them to help celebrate um, to Bishvat which is literally translates to New Year of the Trees, um, which is typically celebrated with tree plantings. Um, so it was really exciting for us to plant our trees um, with them. And we plan to have more events out at Xena this semester um, so that we can finish planting saplings on experimental plots and do data collection on the saplings that were planted. Adelaide, I recall we had an invitation to Lewis and Clark to join us. Did they did they make it? They're Jewish students? Yes, they did. There was one um, participant from Lewis and Clark who made it to help us plant trees. That's great. That's my alma mater. So, so the uh, uh, students uh, at Willamette have many different majors. And so this sort of, uh, you can you get a, get a sense of that. Uh, the political action um, is global thoughts in a very local uh, and specific way. Um, the again, the website and the work of the students attracted attention from community members who uh, wanted to slow down and maybe stop the development of a historic farm, the Meyer Public Farm. You can see this big uh, green space here, and these spots here are oak trees. And there, there's a proposal that uh, ultimately has been allowed to go and uh, put in a bunch of homes in that space and remove some oaks. And so the students did their best and uh, engaged in the uh, political process of providing expert testimony and uh, personal interest and concern and learned some of the technical language of uh, doing this particular kinds of correspondence. And then I uh, did it in the interest of our group. The uh, another place in which students have been learning the technical details of how and when uh, we have rules, policies, guidelines, and laws is Salem's uh, tree code. And there was an opening for public policies on that against uh, a group of students went and looked at that, went through the process and provided uh, their perspective on the value of Oregon white oaks and, uh, and arguing for an improvement of greater conservation of, of, uh, of those trees. The uh, again, the uh, outreach and the media that the students have gotten, we were invited to collaborate with the Mission Street Parks Conservancy 
and uh, other folks in the interest of Bush Pasture Park, there was a recognition that the Salem Heritage Tree Program, the only oak tree, the only organic tree that had been initially recognized by the program had uh, been lost. And so they asked us for a consultation on which oak trees or groups of oaks might merit uh, attention. And so that's still in process, um, but there's a proposal that uh, will go forward to go and add some new, uh, couple of historic trees in Bush Pasture Park and probably uh, a large grove there in, in the park. So that's that's still active. Um, neat, neat policy. Heritage tree status uh, adds to the cultural and social value of the trees. It doesn't give any extra legal protection, but it elevates the attention to individual trees based on their cultural value. This particular tree is probably the most famous one in Bush Pasture Park. It's used in all kinds of communications, and you can see the really long branch here on this tree. That tells us that that is one of these pre-colonial, pre-white uh, settler trees as part of the historic savanna that was maintained by fire, that this tree didn't have any neighbors. All of those trees in the background uh, are probably the offspring at the time of, of uh, settlement when the fire stopped. We don't know that for sure, but that's the, that's the hypothesis. And uh, Bush Pasture Park is perhaps the oldest uh, continuously maintained piece of land on the West Coast in the shape and form of its original settler farm. Um, today it's a park, but uh, it carries that legacy and those trees tell that story. The number and types of research projects, uh, Adelaide was talking about the um, research plots that we've got out of Xena. There's a number of kinds of uh, oak projects that are being developed in and around the opportunity of where do we collect the oaks from, considering their uh, genetics and how to make a database for where those trees came from or where they go. And uh, we expect that there'll be a number of senior theses that'll come from that. Last summer, some Growing Oaks members and some students in my research lab, we mapped all of the trees that were Oregon Oaks in the Bush Pasture Park as part of building this, this uh, awareness. And we're in partnership with the city of Salem and just shared that data with Mylon Davis, who's the current urban forester for the city of Salem. Um, and then so this spring semester, we've been able to host a lot of different um, events that we've been really excited about. So we've had some work parties uh, at Xena this uh, past March and April. Um, we've been able to get out to the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde Nursery. Uh, we were able to participate in CSL's um, Global Day of Service and their tree planting event. And then we were also able to go to the Shampui uh, State Park and um, do a work day with Jeremy Ojua and the Institute of Applied Ecology. Um, so far this semester, we've held two work parties at Xena um, on our experimental plots. Um, the first was the one that I had talked about earlier um, with Jewish Student Union um, setting up the plot and planting the saplings. Um, and then our second event was primarily battling with invasive blackberries. Um, at this event, we worked with members of our group as well as volunteers from the wider Willamette community um, to tend to the land and remove the blackberries that were encroaching on our saplings along with invasive scotch broom, um, which we also removed. Um, and we ended the day with a hike around Xena Forest, um, which was a really fun way to have some team bonding and end the day. And then, so on March 18th, we were able to host a work day with Jeremy Odrua, the head of the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde Nursery. And so he gave us a tour of the nursery because we had some new volunteers that hadn't been there before. Um, and then he took us to a, a site that he's restoring on the property. And so we were able to plant some native species at the site. Um, and so these were native strawberry and then iris tenax. And so we got to use the um, shovels and then also these smaller kind of knife looking instruments called hori horis to dig um, small enough holes to put in um, the native species that we had. Um, and then we just had a lot of fun being able to socialize with students outside of Willamette um, and then also just get our hands in the dirt and 
and have Jeremy show us some of the rubber boas that he finds, which are um, pretty harmless snakes that he lets wrap around his arms like bracelets. <laughs> um, so it was just fun getting to hang out with everyone. The rubber bow is one of the uh, reptile signatures of Oak Savannah. And so it's a, the northernmost extent of boas. The boa constrictor uh, is, lives right here in the Wyoming Valley. And uh, it's a really charming little creature. Um, then on April 8th, we celebrated, we collaborated with the Community Service Learning for the Global Day of Service. Um, and we also collaborated with the city of Salem to plant trees along a stretch of sidewalk just south of campus. Um, we planted many different species of trees, um, several Oregon white oaks, which Bella and I got to plant, which was really exciting. Um, but then we also planted other non-native oaks and other non-native trees that are expected to fare better in the future due to changes in climate, um, specifically species that are better adapted for warmer and drier summers. Um, the trees were selected as part of an ongoing experiment to observe growth in different species of oaks um, exposed to similar conditions. So they were all planted along the same stretch of sidewalk. Um, and then they're going to be observed as they grow to see um, which trees fare better. Um, we in total planted 18 trees and were able to build community and enthusiasm around oaks. We had, I think, like was was it like 25 participants, Dave? I'm not sure I remember the number. I think maybe it was a little yeah, less. I uh, no, definitely 25. Okay. Yeah. We had a lot of um a big turnout from the Willamette community, which was really great. The street that we're on is University Street, and we picked that because uh you can see that currently um uh, this is primarily a hospital parking lot and sort of a semi-soulless area of, of uh uh, development and funny little odd buildings. You can see in the background behind uh, Adelaide there, there's a house. So there used to, used to be a neighborhood and it does have a few remnant Oregon Oaks. Uh, we thought uh, that this neighborhood used to be connected to the university. This was part of the historic neighborhoods in the 1920s and 30s to our community. Students, professors uh, would have lived in this neighborhood before it was changed in terms of its development. Um, and so thinking about climate futures, we did plant four Oregon white oaks, and then we have four other species of oaks that are part of the uh, expectation of what we'll be like in the 2060s, 2080s. They come from the Central Valley of California. And so that's a looking forward to the future. Uh, the Oregon white oaks will probably thrive um, uh, in that future. Currently, there's always the worry about invasive species. And so having multiple species of oaks also can give us some resilience potentially for unexpected changes in our biodiversity. Um, and then our most recent work party was on April 22nd. Uh, we were able to participate in an event held by the Institute of Applied Ecology and the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ron. And this was at the Champouille State um, Park. And so this event focused on hand pulling invasive um, species uh, in a section of the land at the Shampui, at Shampui where um, the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ron are growing um, native species that um, are first foods for them. Um, and so no pesticides are used in the area, which is why we were required to hand pull the weeds um, so as not to kind of mess with their food supply. Um, and so we got to use the Hori Hori's again, and this was um, used instead of shovels just because um, the, the area was intermixed with native species that we wanted to keep in the ground, but also the weeds. So it, it kind of had the mi minimal amount of damage when extracting the weeds. Um, and so we had a few students from Willamette that were able to participate in this event, which was really exciting. And then, um, it's, this event was part of an ongoing volunteering that we've been able to do with the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ron. And then we are also interested in participating in any more events that the Institute of Applied Ecology has in the following years. So we're really excited about being able to work with them and this opportunity. I'll just add Shampui. Uh, earlier, uh, there was notation of the delicious carrot, the native carrot. Uh, and this uh, Shampui is the French uh, colonial settler interpretation of the indigenous word for that carrot. And then this place through the white settler uh, 
development practice, much of those were lost. And so the uh, idea of this state park is to go and bring that back. And then particularly to have a place for uh, elders uh, in the um, Grand Rock community so they can just drive up and get out there easily access and be able to go and get those uh, traditional foods and traditional medicine. Um, and then so Adelaide and I are taking over as project leads for the Growing Oaks project for the next year. Um, and so we've had some future plans that we and ourselves and Dave have kind of been talking about and um, what we're interested in for the next year. Um, so a lot of our um, current student leaders are going off to do study abroad um, for the next year, which is really exciting for them. Um, and we really want to encourage like being able to do that outside of Growing Oaks and not kind of making this a focus that takes away from other experiences that students are able to have at Willamette. Um, so we'll be focusing on kind of a larger recruitment for the next year with the upcoming um, freshman class. Um, ideally, we'd like to get an additional five or five to seven student leaders, um, at least three more growing leaders because almost all of our growing leaders are going on these study abroads. Um, a photography and social media leader, and then a Native Indigenous Student Union liaison, just because we haven't had that, I think, um, since last year, our, um, a former student graduated who was kind of helping us navigate building relationships with the um, Indigenous peoples of the area. Um, and then we also want to continue monitoring monitoring our experimental plots um, and our donated oaks um, in their new homes as we've been able to get them out to people and have them planted in the ground. Um, and so ideally this would be through iNaturalist, um, uploading the locations of the oaks that we've donated and keeping track of where the acorns came from and also how they're doing in their new homes. Um, and so uh, there's also a link on our website to the iNaturalist page uh, if people want to check out the map that we've been able to create so far with the locations of the origins of acorns and also um, where they've been newly planted. Yeah, I'll just add uh, for those who are reading this or seeing this in archive version, um, I hope you've already joined us and are uh, bringing your uh, enthusiasm, wisdom, and creative ideas to future plans. Uh, we're uh, it's definitely a collaborative, uh, uh, multi-leader space. And so we're always looking for new good ideas. Lots of need for art. Uh, we haven't done any singing yet, uh, so we could add that. And then, of course, lots of getting our hands dirty. Yeah, and then um, looking more further into the future, um, we are working with a collaboration of organizations focused on oak conservation in Oregon um, to plan the 2025 Year of the Oak um, with the eventual goal of passing legislation relating to oak protection. Um, we've had a couple meetings and we're really excited about 2025 and the Year of the Oak. Um, Bell and I are also working on writing a two-year master plan for growing oaks, um, outlining our goals and what we see for the future of our group um, and planning ahead. And then we're also furthering our connection with live. Um, if we have a good acorn year, we will work on collecting about 100,000 acorns um, through the six live hubs um, set up around the Salem area. And then we're gonna be working to growing them into saplings so that they can be planted on these wineries to restore the oak savanna that was once in place of those wineries. Great. My, uh, I didn't make this term up, but oak saplings, you can call them oaklings. Oh, true. Great. Great. Um, Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just going to say this uh, QR code would take you to, I think, the link tree that we have of, has a link to our website and then any upcoming events that we will be having in the future. Should I go to stop share? I think we have one more slide for oh, oh. questions. Oh, it was just a picture. It wasn't. Okay. I'm sure it's a yeah. good picture. We should, we should probably see it. Okay, let's share. Well, uh, while Professor Craig is bringing that back up, I want to oh, thank go. our oh, beautiful photo. Um, thank you to our panelists for sharing so much about the Growing Oaks project and all the fantastic work that you've been putting into this. You've all been super busy and um, it's an incredible project. So 
We have time for maybe a short question if there is anyone with us in the room who has a question to offer. Um, and if not, I have a quick question um, that I'll ask. Um, so any questions? I have a, I have a question. I actually have a couple questions, but uh, Professor Erebus, I don't know, if, did you have any questions before I go jumping in? Uh, no question, just uh, all praise to this group. It's been my huge pleasure to watch this evolve over the past several years. So um, kudos to you guys. I certainly agree. What an incredible project. Um, one of the aspects of the project that I found really interesting um, is the, the collaboration with the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde. I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about how that relationship um, came about with Growing Oaks. Uh, the, uh, came about through hope and the, that we, uh, could, uh, do our homework and sort of figure out as many things as we could without asking from members of the tribe to do labor and work for us. And so, uh, each time we went and were developing ideas and talking about what we're doing, we, we, uh, communicated to David Harrelson, who's the cultural resource officer, uh, lead for the tribe, uh, David is extraordinarily busy. Uh, he shared with us that the number of enrolled tribal members in the Confederate Tribes of Grand Ronde is less than the total number of schools and colleges and universities in the Willamette Valley. So when folks like us have great ideas and want to connect, uh, there just is no ability for them to meet that capacity. Um, and so uh, that being said, uh, we also consulted with uh, lots of folks uh, and um, and through that participation um, of sharing what we wanted to do in our tent, and, and uh, then um, there was there was interest in how we're doing it. I think the actions of the students deciding, like, how can we help? How can we follow uh, the Grand Ron and the uh, Kalapuya and the uh, uh, legacy and the uh, Celeste people? We just make ourselves available, and so whatever they ask of us, we try to do to the best of our ability. So. That's remove blackberries. Uh, great if that's go help with the native plant nursery. Uh, it's so so much uh, fun. The ride out there and the social connections and the Ripaboa and all the things that we learn. And so it's it's been the uh, the way that you make make uh, good neighbors. Um, and so uh, yeah. So again, it's come about through hope and luck. Uh -huh. Thanks. Well, thanks for that answer, Marissa. Did you want to ask your question? Sure. Um, I was just curious for Isabella and Adelaide, what you have found to be the biggest challenge in helping to lead this project and what has been the biggest area of growth or what you've learned from leading the project. Um, I think for me, because uh, I've been with the group for about a year and a half now, it was um, when I first started, it was I didn't realize how much work Angie and Grace were putting into the project. Like they do a lot off off the um, on the side that we don't see a lot in um, in like our team meetings and, and other stuff. And so kind of working with them and growing my skills as a project lead to kind of take over for them in the future has been kind of a part of that has been saying just how much they do. Um, and so kind of learning how to balance the job with schoolwork and, and other um, interests of mine. And, and so it's been really fun learning with them. Um, and I think just kind of makes me appreciate the work that they've put in so far to get this project started, um, just because they are full-time students and they've got other things that they do and have been able to start the project. So I'm really excited to kind of have my turn at um, leading the project and kind of putting my own spin um, on what we do. Yeah, um, I mean, I think for me, I joined this year and then I became a project lead assistant um, in the winter and second semester at the beginning. So I think the biggest challenge for me has just been jumping in right away and trying to learn as much as I can as soon as I can, um, just to like soak all of it in. <laughs> but it's been really fun and I've had a great time. And I think my biggest area of growth, is that the second part of your question? Okay. Yeah, I think my biggest area of growth in this project has also been my biggest challenge in just the soaking it all in and learning as much as I can about the group's history and the connections that we have 
um, and the significance of Oregon white oak um, to biodiversity, to culturally, um, all of the significance of it, um, which has been really exciting and something that I've definitely taken a lot from. I'll say Adelaide is like the best soaker inner I've ever seen that, that she was part of a, this initial gathering of the uh, year of the Oak uh, 2025 meeting. And it had the uh, founder and director of Institute for Applied Ecology, Tom Kay, uh, the founders of the Oregon Oak Accord, Nicole Manis and Mimi Castile. And then uh, uh, I'm totally forgetting his first name, uh, Sarah uh, from Live. And so, and then, and then I was there and Adelaide was just taking fantastic notes and going uh, gangbusters on, on uh, every detail is there. And then her ability to listen and ask some really key questions. We were a little bit bashful given uh, our relatively small footprint in the, in the world. Um, but the other folks in this um, leadership team were insistent that the students participate. And it was all based on Adelaide's sort of presence in that, in that Zoom call. So, and then I'd say, um, a tradition, I don't know, this is not a reason to be in Growing Oaks, but that growth and leadership um, skills and the way in which it's so rich um, at so many different topics at one time has uh, a great uh, job, Isabella, complimenting Grace and Angie. Both of them have um, had special professional opportunities um, that they have gotten through skill building and the awareness of the project. and. Um, Grace started with Growing Oaks and then got a, a, a very competitive uh, fellowship at Harvard Forest to work on oaks. And then uh, Bella's uh, also going to go do uh, something at, at, uh, through Harvard again this year. And so those are, again, not reasons to do, do the work. I don't think anybody does it for that, but this has been kind of emergent properties of, of the opportunity to grow. The one concern I had, uh, oh, Chris, Sarah, uh, alive, the work that Angie and Grace were doing it was a lot of hours. And so um, we had to calculate the value of the oak trees for this project of 10,000 oaks and 100,000 acorns. And so then I asked them to start calculating the number of hours and start to think about if this is, was a professional group and you know what our time would be worth. And it's, it's in the tens of thousands of dollars uh, in terms of uh, contributions in kind. So it's really um, extraordinary to see how much the students give. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you all for sharing. Um, it's so great to see the impact that um, your work has for um, outwardly and then also inwardly for yourselves. Um, I think that's incredible. Um, so we're reaching the end of our time here. So I'd like to thank the Office of Alumni Engagement for providing the Zoom and communication and event infrastructure to host this presentation and help us to apply Willamette's motto, not unto ourselves alone are we born, and highlighting this awesome student-led project. So I'll pass it on to you, Eric. All right. Thanks very much, Marissa, for hosting and to our panelists, um, Adelaide and Isabella and Professor Craig for sharing so much about the Growing Oaks program with us. Um, also, Professor Craig, I appreciate your shout out to, uh, to future audience members. I hope lots and lots of people tune into this recording and that you find this information valuable and, and become inspired to, to be involved in this or similar efforts. Um, and to our alumni, if you're local and would like to join Growing Oaks on one of these service days, an upcoming service day, I will be posting their upcoming events as I become aware of them on our Sustainability Network events page on the WooConnect platform. And then I also want to give a quick shout out to Professor Erebus for joining us tonight too. It's been, been wonderful to have you um, here with us this evening. And so to everyone, thanks for joining us. And again, Growing Oaks, tremendous work. This is a super inspiring project and I can't thank you all enough for your time this evening. All right, take care everyone. <laughs>